So, I'm sick of all you dumbass brokers not knowing how to handle the initial call with your clients. Uh, today, I'm going to go ahead and bless you with this lesson. You know, I see brokers all the time. They spend so much time and effort marketing uh, their business. They spend so much time doing you know, ads and going to marketing events. And honestly, it's a bunch of bullshit and it's just you just wasting your time because when a time when it, the time comes when you have a client on the phone, when they have reached out to you and they're interested in you helping them get funding, you have no idea what to do. You don't have the right questions to ask. You, you, you know, um, you don't even know how to lead the conversation. I'll start off here. The one thing I love about the lending industry is there's literally no selling. You know, they're selling with everything that you do when, you, when you're talking about business, but the dynamics of the relationship is it's just so pleasant out of every single business that I've ever been, uh, been at. You know, if you're talking about any kind of service-based or product-based business, there's a lot of selling involved. Um, you know, the only thing that I can say is similar to this is like a medical field. You know, there's no selling medical services, okay? Doctors are just gonna get business. You're gonna get sick. You ain't got no damn choice but to go to the hospital, okay? So there's no really selling surgery. Motherfucker, you need the surgery. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's almost similar. I'm not gonna say the same. And I say almost similar because of competition. Uh, but the competition is getting so weak that I feel sorry for y'all because most of y'all don't know what to do. Panta Consulting Group, we're killing it in this arena. And the people that are in my students that are in my course, Broker Solutions Academy, they're killing it. By the way, Broker Solutions Academy, link in the description. We'll teach you how to become a real business loan broker, not a glorified referral partner. If you're looking for some funding as well, Penitent Consulting Group, link in the description. We work directly with clients just like yourself to help you get the funding that you need uh, to start, launch, expand, whatever the hell you're trying to do. But anyway, the purpose of this video is I'm going to clear the air for all you confused brokers out there. There's a lot of people that do all this busy work. Okay, they, they go to marketing events. They, they, they oh, I'm, I'm social media marketing. I'm, you're fucking wasting your time. Because when it, times come to, when, it comes, when it comes for the time for you to seize the moment, you don't know what to do, okay? And I'm gonna bless you, and this kind of comes from the theory of the three paths of lending. You've heard me talk about this book before. There's going to be a link in the description. You can go ahead and download it for free. There's an audio version where you hear me read it to you because I know that you're lazy. You don't want to do it yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. So there's going to be a link, audio version coming soon. Hopefully by the time you're watching this video, it is released. There's going to be a link in the description for you to watch the audio version for free. Uh, but the whole concept of the book is there's only three ways on how you can fund any business, period. doesn't matter if uh, one of your clients is looking for a million dollars or $1,000. There's only three ways on how you can get that client funded. Either based on that client's credit, either based on that client's income, or either based on a particular asset that can be collateralized. That's it, period, point blank, I'm done. That's it, there's nothing else. You know, unless you're talking about like grants or pure, pure lending or venture capital. But we're gonna focus today on debt financing. Debt financing is not a grant, debt financing is not an equity position, none of that stuff. We're strictly focusing on debt financing, which is what mo most brokers are pushing. You know, we, we sell, you know, we're talking about SBA loans, merchant cash advance, factoring loans, purchase order financing, uh, uh, you know, uh, factoring, account receivable financing, revenue lines of credit, the, you know, uh, business credit cards, real estate loans, hard money loans, all this stuff. This is what you're offering. They're strictly debt financing. And first off, the first concept is understand and segment each one of these products because there's a ton. I think there's probably over... 30 to 50 different lending products that are out there. And you're gonna be confused as hell if you don't segment them, okay? I have this thing that I always say is, I try to keep things simple. Keep it simple, stupid. Go back to that KISS method that I learned. So we try to keep things very, very simple here at Penting and Salty Group. So understanding the three paths of lending, understanding that if somebody has great credit, the option that they have is getting them business credit cards, doing the uh, credit card stacking. If somebody has good revenue, there's so many different options. Revenue line of credit, merchant cash advance if they have bad credit, revenue uh, term loan, and there's different types of revenue term loans based on you know where you get it from. An SBA term loan is completely different than a regular bank term loan. Um, there's, what do you call it, factoring, there's purchase order financing, there's, there's just so many different, and these are all programs. The theme here, these are programs that require income verification for you to qualify. Lastly, there is asset-based financing. These are what, what, you know, real estate loans, and within the real estate loans, we're talking about the three different 
t uh, segments of real estate loan. Uh, and let me let me throw some charts in your face because you guys are not gonna really get this unless I, I paint the picture and put it in your face. So get it back to the screen. Credit based funding, you have two products: personal credit cards or business credit cards. Revenue based funding, you have a bunch of different options: revenue term loans, revenue line of credit, budget cash advance, purchase order financing, account people financing, factoring loans, small business loans. There's seven eight seven eight um, uh, standard seven eight small seven eight seven eight. But an AK melee finish. You can see a bunch of different options when you talk about revenue based financing, and then you have asset based financing. Financing, which is real estate equipment uh, financing and leasing that you're talking about stocks and all kind of stuff within the real estate uh, just alone there's you know three different types of real estate finance conventional agency and private money um, you need to know this as a business loan broker this needs to be standard information you have to have that in your brain and you get that information by reading this book read this book two or three times and you'll get it why am I stressing so much about this damn book? Not just, I'm giving it away for free. It's not like I'm making money off of it, okay? God damn, I need to get a new shirt. I've been hitting the gym too much, okay? You see them arms getting big? Anyway, let's get back to this, all right? That's the problem when you hit the gym and you start, you start to see them gains. You gotta, you gotta change that closet, okay? I've had to get in a lot of stuff, get rid of a bunch of stuff, but anyway. So, when you get on that phone with the client, let me show you how you lead the conversation and you help them reach their goal. I always say in Pentagon Consulting Group, our goal is to help you reach your goal. So our goal is definitely not to waste your time like all these other brokers are doing. Our goal is not to just sit there and listen to you uh, babble and mumble about a bunch of shit, uh, which that is part of the sales process to, to let the client talk. But I want to show you how to lead the conversation because I don't like wasting time. You shouldn't either. Let's get straight to it. So there's this theorem that we built. And I'm going to start from scratch. So let's just assume we're going to do a mock uh, video here. Uh, you, you're talking to a client on the phone. Hey, thank you so much, Dave. Um, you know, how are you doing today? You know, wh wh where am I talking to you from? You know, I'm in Dallas, Texas, or whatever it is. Okay, Dave, uh, what's a good last name so I can add you to my database? Um, you know, my name is Dave Dallas. Okay, Dave Dallas, all right. What's a good email for you, sir? Dave Dallas, all right, cool. All right, now, tell me a little bit about your business. What exactly do you do? And as you can see, I asked that question as I'm, as I'm going ahead and filling out the necessary information that I need in order to get this client in my system. You have to have a database. All you brokers that are keeping track of your clients through some goddamn piece of paper or a spreadsheet, or I don't know, you're trying to remember that shit in your head. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with you. So once you have the client in the database, we have this initial call tab. And again, this is a custom made database. If you're one of my students, Broker Solutions Academy, you know uh, how important this is. And if you're interested in working as a business loan broker, taking our course, we will build out a custom CRM that looks exactly like this. We're gonna clone our CRM and give you all the templates and all the information that you need. So, um, you know, so you have the conversation, Dave tells you, you know, Mr. Dallas or whatever it is, uh, you know, um, Tell me a little bit about the business. What, what do you actually do? You know, and you come right here, you know, I'm a, a towing company. Well, whatever the hell it is, you can put that information there. Okay, cool. Uh, how did you hear about us? Uh, through Google, or I watched one of your crazy YouTube videos. You're cursing out some people or whatever it is. All right, cool. Well, how much money are you looking for? I'm looking for about $50,000. Okay, good. Do y'all see what's going on here? I'm leading the conversation, I'm gathering the data that I need in order to evaluate which one of these three paths that I mentioned that I'm going to take him through in order to help him reach their goal. Our goal is to help the clients reach their goal. Our goal is not to help the clients time. Follow me along. Mr. Now, so far, I know about Dave's name, I know about his business, I know where he's from, I also know how much money he's looking for and I know where he found out about me. That's five things that I just, just simple questions, look up, okay, let's, let's keep this moving. Um, Towing business, okay, and, and uh, tell me a little bit. So you need $50,000. What do you need the money for? Ah, I need the money to pay off my ex-wife. I'm just caught. I'm kidding, okay. I need the money for marketing and working capital, okay? Um, so, all right, well, great, great. So, so far, what well, my understanding is you got a towing business. You've been in business for about five years. Is that what you said? Okay, yeah, I've been in business for about five years. Um, okay, good. So tell me a little bit briefly about your credit. What would you say your credit score is? So listen to how I'm asking these questions. I want you to know, just listen to how I'm asking these questions. What would you say your credit score is? And this is where the conversation comes in. Because again, what are the three ways you can get somebody funded? Either based on their credit, income, or assets. So that's why I'm asking these questions. Now, see where I'm going with this. Uh, what would your credit? My credit is shitty. I just got done with a divorce and I got 
30 kids and I got child support and all that, you know, all my credit is good, whatever it is, they say it doesn't really matter, actually it does as far as information gathering, but just taking the information, whatever story they have. People usually have a story when it comes to each one of these questions. Allow your customers to expand on their story though, but come back and redirect and grab the conversation back because you're leading it. Okay, you're not just gonna let them go on a tangent and talk about other shit and their ex-wife and how their mom and, and stepdaughter are living with whatever the fuck. I don't I don't care about that shit. I'm sorry, clients. I, I love you, but I don't care about that shit. I care about helping you, guiding you through which path is gonna help you reach your goal, okay? Because you're gonna love me more if I help you reach your goal. That is what it's all about. So my credit is good or whatever it is, okay. Uh, another little sneaky question I usually ask as it pertains to credit is what is your highest limit credit card? Ooh. Powerful question, powerful question. You know why? Especially when you're talking about credit-based funding, I want you to think about it like this, okay? Lenders lend, especially when it comes to credit-based funding, they lend to you based on what you've been able to handle in the past. Let me make that make sense. If you have two twins, they look exactly alike, they went to college for the same degree, graduated from the same university, you got twin number one that has two credit cards with a $500 limit, you have twin number two that has two credit cards, both of them have a $10,000 limit, and let's just say they both have the same credit score. They both have 700 credit score. Very much so could be ideal. Number one, two cards, $300 limit. Number two, two cards, uh, $10,000 limit. 10, uh, 10 fingers. So if they both apply for a business credit card, which one do you think will get the highest limit on their approvals? Twin number one with $300 limits or twin number two with $10,000 limit? Let me hear you again. Of course, it's twin number two. Put your comments down below, by the way. When I ask that question, put your comments down below. So don't wait until I reveal the answer. Put your comments down below. Let's collaborate on this. Uh, so anyway, of course, twin number two, which means highest past balance is very important for you to, number one, gauge what the client can get approved for because we already know what they're looking for is $50,000. If twin number one came to me, I'd be like, dude, we gotta talk about something else. Credit-based funding is not gonna work for you because you don't have the history to back up that you can actually manage and handle a $50,000 line of credit, okay? Because all you've been able to manage is $300 line of credit, okay, times two, maybe $600. But nevertheless, that's a sneaky question that you ask out there to just get a sense of what type of credit do they have? You simply ask them, what is your highest limit credit card? Okay. And this usually will open up the conversation. Oh yeah, it's $10,000. And, and, and then you can even ask them, what's the balance on that? Because you're trying to get the utilization. What is their utilization? Okay. Uh, and this kind of goes into the, the four factors as it pertains to what we look for in order for you to qualify for business credit cards, which is directory items, utilization, age of file, and inquiry. So that's why I'm asking these questions. Moving on. How long have you been in business? Or how long have you been employed? You know, if, if they have a job. Oh, I've been in business for five years. Okay, great, great, business as well, okay. Now, how much money do you make personally? Oh, you see where I'm going with this? The first evaluation, the first questions were really just generic, and then I quickly turned into asking questions as it pertains to credit-based funding, and then now I'm asking income-based documents as it pertains to the second uh, uh, way that you can get clients funded, which is based on their income, based on their revenue, whatever you want to call it. So how much money do you make personally? Oh, I make 56000 a year, um, you know, and how much money does a business make? Oh, the business makes about a million dollars. Uh, in revenue, but we, we net about, you know, uh, 250,000, whatever the case might be, you know, you just gather that information. Do you own any assets that may be used as collateral? Boom. Again, going back to the three paths of lending, there's three ways of making it. Let me just make this clear. Let's make this clear. Okay. Cause I know a, a lot of y'all just be asking all these questions, gathering information, just like a dumbass. You don't even know why you're asking the questions. You have to be 10 steps ahead as a business loan broker, okay? Lenders care about two things and two things only. They don't care about how passionate the person is. They don't care how many PhDs they got. They don't care about their family issues. They don't care about none of that shit. They don't care about how, how much business they're gonna get. One. None of that shit matters. I always tell people that lenders care about two things and two things only. Lenders care about how you gonna pay me back and what the hell is gonna happen if you don't pay me back. That's all they give a damn about. They don't care about nothing else. How you gonna pay them back and what the hell is gonna happen if you don't pay them back. So what you have to justify to the underwriter when you're submitting an application for any kind of funding, any type of funding is what I'm talking about. Those are the two questions that you must make sure you have justified for you to actually guarantee an approval with that application. 
how the hell you're gonna pay this back and what the hell is gonna happen how you're gonna pay it back getting back to the different products and how they justify this just really think about it from a credit based standpoint how the hell are you gonna pay me back it, well clearly you have a history of always making your payments on time so I see that you have good credit if you don't pay me back I'm gonna fuck up your credit that's what what the hell is gonna happen if you don't pay me back because credit based funding is still unsecured okay so there's no collateral you know it, it will turn into a collection and then charge off and so forth and so on now when it comes to revenue based funding how the hell are you gonna pay me back well cool they're gonna be asking for proof of verification they have to make sure that you can debt service what you're actually looking at borrowing so how the hell are you gonna pay me back they look at bank statements they look at they maybe look at tax returns they look at financial documents they, they look at whatever what the hell is gonna happen if you don't pay me back well they're gonna file a UCC on the business okay so if the business you know uh, goes out of business or whatever it is they're gonna be able to recoup you know based on the business assets the revenue or whatever it is but they most importantly want to make sure that whatever money they lent to you you have enough income that you can service that debt and let me let me be clear because you have clients that say well we're not making that money now but once we get this money we're gonna make a million dollars a month lenders don't give a damn about after the fact they care about what the hell is going on now. What have you, what have you done for me lately? What has he done for you lately? Uh, man, that's all that really matters. Uh, how the hell are you gonna pay me back? It's based on, um, you know, the income verification. What the hell is gonna happen if you don't pay me back? They see how much income that you're generating, and they're gonna file a UCC on the business, and you're gonna be on the hook for anything in case that business defaults. And some revenue-based programs do require personal guarantee. So they'll come after you personally if you don't pay them back. Lastly, asset-based lending. Well, clearly, how the hell are you gonna pay me back? They're gonna have to look at some type of, type of income that either the asset is generating, let's just say you're buying an income-generating asset, apartment building, or you know, rental homes or whatever it is. They will consider how much income that property is making. I guess this is where I gotta, I gotta go back um, and, and actually, um, no, I don't. They will, they will consider the actual income that the property uh, is generating. That, that's the only thing they're going to be looking at. Um, you know, they, they'll also look at the value of the property because they got to justify their second concern. What the hell is going to happen if you don't pay me back? If, they don't, if you don't pay me back, they come after the goddamn asset. They come after assets so they can recoup their costs. That's how they can repossess your car. That's how, you know, they, they can foreclose on your house and all this other stuff because they're trying to recoup the asset. Uh, so anyway, there's three ways on how you can get funded. And the questions that you ask should be based on trying to figure out, uh, let's just say he owns a house, uh, trying to figure out what is the best path to guide your client through based on what their funding needs to help them reach their funding goal, okay? Uh, what I plan to do is, I'm gonna start doing some live calls with some, you know, me talking to the clients. I'm gonna actually also launch a Patreon. So people that are in my Patreon that are supporting this type of content, you'll be able to actually see me take live calls with my clients. And another thing is, we're gonna be releasing the YouTube videos on Patreon a week or two early before we release them on Facebook. So there's gonna be some benefits in joining our Patreon group. There's gonna be a link in the description where you can sign up for a Patreon. One more other thing before I forget. As you can see, when we get to the bottom here, there's credit report lock-in credentials. Because again, within each one of the lending products, you must evaluate the client's credit report. On the revenue-based and the asset-based, credit report is not a disqualifying factor, but it is a compensating factor. So you must have the client provide their credit report. When I get to this section, usually what I say is, can you, Mr. Dave, Mr. Dallas, can you provide a recent copy of your credit report or we're gonna need to pull a recent copy? Listen to what I just said. I didn't ask him to do something or, you know, I just said, can you provide a recent copy of your credit report or we're gonna need you to pull a recent copy of your report? And then after that, Whatever their answer is, oh yeah, I got a recent copy of the corporate, I can send it to you. Okay, send it to this email address. I'm gonna send you an email, just respond back to it. Or no, I don't have a recent copy of the corporate. Okay, great. We'll put it up with a company called Identity IQ, uh, which is one of our uh, credit, credit cards affiliate, uh, credit report affiliates. I'm, uh, uh, let's go ahead and pull a copy of the credit report and we can pull it right now. Uh, I just need your permission in order to do so. Is this a good time for you? And then you go ahead, you go through the Identity IQ link and pull that client's credit report. It's really simple. Uh, you just go to this link, and then you go ahead, they, they usually charge $1. So you tell the client, uh, we, this uh, given our relationship, Identity IQ will charge you $1 in order for us to pull this credit report. It is on a trial membership program, but what usually we do, and don't tell Identity IQ I told you to do this, we have the clients go on there, pull their credit. If you wanna maintain the membership, great, but if not, you can go ahead and cancel before that seven day or 20, 30 day or whatever period is over and all it did is cost you one dollar for us to uh, us to have access to your credit report usually don't have a problem with this at all 
I pull it on the spot. Well, if I don't pull it on the spot, they say that I want to go ahead, I'll, I'll, I'll pull that later. Then I say, great. When can you get back to me with a copy of this quarter report? I don't just leave them hanging like, oh, it gave back to me whenever the hell you feel like it. Hell no, I ain't got time for that. When can you get back to me with this credit report? Is it possible you can go ahead and do this before the end of the day today so we can know exactly which qualify for it? Can you get this to me before noon? You see what I'm saying? Set the right timelines. People treat you based on how you require them to treat you. Stop wasting your client's time. Stop wasting your time. Learn how to be a real business loan broker. Link in the description if you want our training. Link in the description if you need us to help you get your funding as well. Thank you for your time today, and thank you for watching this video. I'm done.